If you are struggling to edit your Insta360 videos, then this video is for you because I'm going to break down step by step five different ways you can reframe your 360 videos in the Insta360 app. And the fifth way is by far the easiest and quickest way. So let's get started. This is the footage we're going to be working with. This is me walking through a park in Malta. There's a fountain on the right hand side and a building on the left hand side. There are three editing modes, AI, quick and pro. In AI editing, you have less control over the edit because the app is editing the video for you automatically. In quick editing, it's a hybrid between automatic and manual editing. So you have some control over the edit. And in pro editing, you have full control over the edit. So you can choose exactly how the video should look like. Let's go through AI editing first. Tap the brain button so the video is analyzed by the app. In this example, the AI has chosen a selfie view with a jump cut. Go to clips to see all the other shots that the automatic editing has come up with. The automatic editing has also picked out the forward view, a scenery view, and others. If you are happy with any of these views, like selfie for example, then you can tap export to save this video to your phone. Or if you liked the previous edit with the jump cut, then you can also save this shot to your phone. To edit this shot further, tap the edit button. And here you can choose templates to customize the look of the video and change the music. Let's go back to clips and tap auto edit. And now the automatic editing will come up with another edit. If you like this edit, then you can export the shot to your phone. If you want to edit the shot further, tap edit. I think this shot is too long, so I'm going to tap the last segment and delete it. The first shot is seven seconds long. Let's adjust it a little bit shorter. So I will go to adjust and I will trim the start of this shot until here and tap the tick to confirm. And this is the final result. If you want to customize the camera movement, tap a segment, go to movement, and here you can choose a different camera movement of your choice. So I will choose right to left instead. Tap the tick to confirm. And this is the result. Once you're happy with the final result, tap export and save the shot to your phone. And those are all the different ways you can reframe your 360 video in AI editing. Now let's go through the controls in quick editing mode. This is a record button. When you press record, then you can use the buttons and controls to record camera movements into the video. One way to add camera movement into the video is by subject tracking. I have automatically been picked up by the app as a subject to track. So when I tap the green tracking icon, I will be highlighted as a trackable subject. If you want to pick something else to track, then tap the tracking icon on the side and then draw a box around something you would like to track. In this case, I want to track myself. So I will tap the green tracking icon and now I have been highlighted automatically. So to track myself throughout the shot, I will tap the record button. Now the app will keep me in the center of the video. I can stop the record button at any time. If you are happy with the result, then you can save the video to your phone. 
When you create shots, all the shots will be saved in a album over here. Then you can review the shots and check which ones you would like to export. Another way to add camera movement is by using the 360 degree rotation button. So to do this, first I'll reframe how I'd like the rotation to start and I can pinch to zoom in or out. I will start recording the camera movement, then tap the 360 degree rotation button to add the rotation automatically. And if you're happy with the result, then you can export the shot. Another way to add camera movement is by using the joystick and the zoom in and out button. So to do this, I'll press record, zoom out, and then use the joystick to look around the 360 video. This is the result. Another way to add camera movement is to screen record your finger gestures into the video. So to do this, press record, I will pinch to zoom in, look at the fountain, look at the building, and then look back at myself. This is the result. Another way to add camera movement is by physically moving your phone around. So first I'll use my finger to put myself in the middle then I will press record, look at the fountain, look at the building, and look back at myself. This is the result. And those are all the different ways you can reframe your 360 video using the quick editor. In pro editing mode, there are a couple of ways to edit 360 video. The first way is subject tracking. This is where you pick something in the video to track automatically. The app will automatically find things in the video to track. So in this example, it has found myself as a trackable subject. So when I tap the green tracking icon, it will automatically start tracking myself throughout the entire video. When the tracking is finished, you can select the green highlighted area to choose a zoom level of your choice. So whether you want to zoom in or out. You can also pinch your fingers in and out to choose a zoom level. And it will keep this zoom level throughout the entire shot. To remove the tracking, tap the trash can icon. Now let's say you want to track something else in the video. Let's say this building for example. To do this, I will hold down my finger on the screen, draw a box around the building and tap start tracking. Now the app is going to keep the building in the middle of the video as I walk around it. Then I can choose the zoom level and this is the final result. Now you know how to use subject tracking. Another way to add camera movement is using keyframes. A keyframe is the yellow plus button and a keyframe can do a couple of things. It can choose where to look in the 360 video. So shall I look at the fountain, the building or myself? So let's take a look at myself for example and add a keyframe here. A keyframe can also choose the zoom level, whether I want to zoom in or out. And a keyframe can also choose the rotation. Another thing to be aware of is the distance between keyframes. So at the beginning of the video, I'm looking at myself and let's say a second later, I'm going to look at the fountain. So if I play this back, the turn from me to the fountain is very fast. Now let me remove the second keyframe. 
and I will look at the fountain three seconds later instead. Now the movement from myself to the fountain is much slower. So the distance between keyframes decides the speed of the camera movement. So let's remove all the keyframes. And in this example, I want to start by looking at myself and then I will look towards the fountain and then I will look towards the building and then back to myself at the end of the video. So to do this, I will put myself in the middle of the video, add a keyframe. I will move forward one second in the timeline to keep looking at myself. So I will position myself in the middle and add a keyframe. So now for the first second, I am just looking at myself. In the next second, I want to turn to look over at the fountain. So I'll position the fountain in the middle and add a keyframe. And I want to keep the view on the fountain for at least one second. So I'll move forward one second in the timeline, position the fountain in the middle and add a keyframe. Then I'll move forward one second in the timeline and turn to look towards the building. So I will put the building in the middle and add a keyframe. I want to keep looking at the building for around one and a half seconds. Each square is one second of video. So I will position the building in the middle, add a keyframe. I will adjust the zoom level to linear to get rid of the fisheye distortion. Then one second later, I will look at myself. So I'll position myself in the middle, add a keyframe. Then I'll go to the end of the timeline to keep looking at myself, add a keyframe, and I will use mega view to zoom out. So now when I play this back, it looks like this. And now you know how to use keyframes to reframe your 360 video. Personally, I think viewfinder mode is the best way to reframe 360 video because it gives the most natural looking camera movement. So to do this, I'll go to the beginning of the video, add a keyframe, tap viewfinder, and now I can move my phone around to create camera movement. At the bottom, there is a slider you need to hold down your thumb on the record button to start recording camera movements into the video. And whilst you're holding down your thumb, if you slide your thumb to the left, it will zoom in the video. And if you slide to the right, it will zoom out the video. So let's give it a go. I'm going to hold down the record button, look at myself, then look at the fountain and zoom in, then look at the building, and then look at myself zoomed in. Tap the tick to confirm, and this is the final result. And now you know how to reframe 360 video using viewfinder mode. Here is a bonus. Another way to reframe your 360 video is using preset camera movements. So to do this, add a keyframe, go to movement and let's say I want to add a 360 rotation automatically without adding keyframes. I'm going to look for the 360 rotation preset. So we can use 360 left or 360 right. Let's use 360 left. And now the camera movement preset has been applied. If you want to adjust the preset, Go to the first keyframe. Now I can choose where the rotation should start. So I can put myself in the middle and I can go to the end keyframe and choose where I'd like the rotation to end and the zoom level. So I will zoom in slightly 
put myself in the middle, update the keyframe, and I can also choose where to apply this camera movement to. So I will drag the right slider in slightly. And when I play this back, I have a automatic 360 rotation.